35, I'd like to call this meeting of the Capital Planning Committee to order. Uh, today we are, we're pleased to have uh, Chumsford Telemedia uh, recording this meeting for live broadcast. I just have to ask if there's anyone else recording an audio or video, making an audio or video recording of the meeting. I don't see any of the meeting of the, I don't see any members of the media, so I'm going to say no. Thank you. Um, just to introduce uh, the members of the Capital Planning Committee that are serving during this fiscal year, fiscal year 19, I'm just going to start to my right. We have Kathy Duffett representing the Finance Committee, Maggie Marshall representing the Library Trustees, Barbara Scar representing the School Committee, and to my left, Dennis Bach, citizen member, John Morrison, another citizen member, Darlene Lucia, town accountant, and Paul Cohen, town manager. Today on the, the agenda, uh, we have a number of departments to get through. We have, um, we'll be hearing from the Council on Aging, uh, Department of Public Works, the Fire Department, and our Town Library. So f first on the agenda is the Council on Aging. So I'd like to invite uh, Deborah Siriani and any folks that are interested, uh, Diane Sperry Diane, is one of them. and Diane Sperry. Council on Aging members. Can we pull up another chair? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Steve came all this Steve way. Lynn, <laughs> another council member. So we have Diane Sperry and Steve Flynn from the Council on Aging. Good morning, Good everybody. Morning. Hello. Good morning, gentlemen. So we'll try to keep this as short as possible. Um, so I just want to let you know, at this moment in time, we are uh, 60, um, 60 and up age in, in Chelmsford. We have 28% of the population right now. So um, as of 2020, it's projected that 30% of our town will be over 60. So uh, we serve 60 and up. We also serve at the senior center, the, the caregivers of those folks. And we're also um, more of a community center a lot of times at night and on the weekends. We have many other, um, we have, we have uh, rentals to other uh, groups. We also have, uh, the flu shot, cl the flu clinic, we have voting, we have table of plenty is now part of our um, permanent home, it is at the senior center. So we have three nights a week that we're open and, uh, and then many other weekends and other special events. So um, what we're doing right now is a, our, our main initiative is a what's called an age-friendly community initiative. And it's based on the World uh, Health Organization's model for a community that supports people throughout their lifespan. And um, a community that makes it um, um, its decisions based on being able to live there in a, a healthy and vibrant community um, and, and no matter what your age is. So, um, it, with that being in mind, uh, these projects are within that realm of, of, of our goals in, with an age-friendly community. The first one is, uh, it's been deferred a few times already, and so we're looking to hopefully get it this year. It's the electronic sign for our front of our building. It's uh, basically, it's based on the same one that McCarthy Middle <coughs> School has. Uh, and what we have an old 30-year-old uh, building that's not old compared to high school <laughs> uh, high schools right now but uh, with, it's the original sign it's a wooden um, it needs to be replaced and we're looking to update our center provide a better way of communicating all of the changes all of the things that are happening inside one of the main things that happens is when people walk through the door, I hear over and over is, I've driven by this place for years, I never know what's going on in here. I can't believe what's, what's happening in here. This is great. Uh, we're trying to make sure that people are in that catch basin, they're pulled into our services, they understand uh, what is in there, what resources are available, and uh, then it also gives us the opportunity to um, communicate to people in emergency service in emergency situations where the town sh um, shelter in emergencies and so uh, we feel like it's a it's a, a great asset to have be able to communicate um, what's going on inside which is ever changing <laughs> so we're hoping to get that sign and that's at uh, 26 9 
This is project four on everyone's uh, list. So we have, uh, along with the, the, the wooden sign that's in front, we have any variety of sandwich boards that are thrown up there for different events all, um, all the time. And this also gives us the opportunity to answer your question. The market for have these considered things. seriously corporate uh, donations or fundraiser to make that happen for you? Um, Yes, we actually addressed that with a few different places in the area, and 26,000 is, is a very large amount to put into uh, a, a donation like that. So that's what the response has been, uh, is that that's, that's a very large amount. You know, we have, <laughs> we sent out uh, letters to the community as far as business is going. To the best of my knowledge, we do have three checks in for a total probably $150. Have anybody here ever visited our senior center just out of curiosity? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have probably the, the largest, you can probably discuss this, the largest center, how many thousands go in every week? So we have about two to 400 people a day that come through uh, and uh, various communities, various ages and uh, I would say one of the more uh, active senior centers in the state. Most definitely, We're, uh, pe people are shocked when they find out what's going on in there. <laughs> Sometimes we are too. We go, "What are we doing this?" <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're just constantly going, going, going. So fundraising for we, we do fundraise for a tremendous amount of our uh, of our programs. Staffing even are paid out of fundraising, and so uh, I, more than half of our staff are paid out of grant money or donation um, accounts or fee-based programs. And so marketing is a really big deal uh, for, for the Senior Center. So this is also part of our plan for marketing. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, I think that would be a good, um, a good approach to, if, to try to, to really try to find <coughs> I'm just asking because I yeah. think that's a practical way to go about getting what you need or want. Yeah, well, this is our third year asking the town for it. We have asked uh, and, and, and gone that route and looked for support, and we haven't found that. So if you have any ideas of different companies that are looking to give that to us, then that would be wonderful. Otherwise, then we need to ask the town for support. Thank you. Any questions? There's no doubt that your, your facility is used by yeah. every portion of this community. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with the high school has been using it for years for the after prom breakfast. We have yes. the seniors and senior, seniors and seniors uh, group that meets <coughs> there. We have town meeting there. Uh, we have veterans meeting there. Voting. Have yeah, voting there. I mean, you know, it's really well. The thing about the sign is that people like that we mentioned, they go by it. They have no idea it's a senior sign. Or they may know it's a senior center, but they don't know what's going on inside. Right? Yeah, well, if we have a catastrophe in our town, which every town seems to have it during the winter months, that is a place that people who go to, like last year with the heat problem, and, uh, you know, they're not even aware of it a lot of times, with, you know, unless that sign is out there telling them, okay. Uh, uh, and there's something we've asked for for many, many years. In the last past year, as you notice, we didn't ask for anything. Okay, so, you know, 30% of the population in we town. We had our roof. <laughs> and, uh, I look at the budget over the years, we're, we're probably 1% of the total budget, folks. So the senior center supplies an awful lot to our residents here in town. And, 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 and you know, as a center, I don't think we ask for a whole lot. But anyways, that's you know, yeah. my feeling. And, and as far as we're asking for donations, we did send a letter out to the business associations in town. And that's what we got, $150. So and just recently, you know. we had uh, the flu clinics, flu shot clinics, and people were coming in. They couldn't see the little uh, sign boards out there. They'd fallen down in the wind. They couldn't read them quick enough, and they were coming in all day long asking, when is it starting? And if we'd have had an electronic sign, it would have been easier for them to understand that. 
We can also use it for Amber Alerts and things like that, which is a great thing. I didn't realize. How are the, the chairs? I, I actually didn't really notice. The, oh, the, the chairs are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> they're wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're beautiful and they're very comfortable and people are happy with them so um, thank you that was wonderful and then the, the second project yes, unless so, you have other questions no that's great so I just want to explain just for the committee just because we had a question on that so the senior center has an additional project it involves the parking lot repaving which Debbie will explain just to explain when capital requests were due around October 26 or so so at that time we didn't have a number for this and even up until the time we were compiling these requests and sending them out to the committee. So when the committee looks in their packet, it will say TBD to be determined. So um, Debbie has informed me that, that she has a cost at this point. So that's why it's, there's not a cost in your packet. So Debbie, if you'd like to explain the parking lot project, that would be great. So um, again, in the age-friendly community, one of the, uh, the important parts uh, is access to services so one of the things that we're pushing for now is to um, repair and, and fix our parking lot uh, we understand that there are a lot of parking lots in town that are in disrepair uh, this has been a problem for a few years now we've tried to solve the problem in a patch kind of way uh, we have large cracks that people are um, tripping on and um, like the big divots basically if you imagine someone in a walker their walker gets caught and a few people have actually fallen over their walkers face first so we've already had two documented falls and another one just off of our property uh, on a very similar crack and so what we're trying to do is avoid that again last year I uh, spoke to Gary about this project putting it in for last year and he suggested that we try filling in the cracks with um, well asphalt. with asphalt and so we did that uh, we we were looking for the the least expensive solution to the problem of course and uh, and what's happened is it's basically just sunken in again so it wasn't a, a, a long lasting solution to the problem and we find that people are having problems with access to the to services and so that's our main concern uh, we used a, a tool from the AARP site and the World Health Organization and the, the state um, mass.gov now is pushing for age-friendly <coughs> age -friendly communities and uh, one of the tools they have is a walking audit so you can use it all around town and find out if the places that people are, are trying to access are walk you know your walkability index and, um, and ours is, is, is one of the things that's basically starred for our community is walkability, uh, is, is lower. Most of our services are much better than other, other towns. And so for senior services, we're doing very well for an age-friendly community. But this is one thing we wanted to make sure that the place that people are, are trying to access for, um, for nutrition services for um, for fuel assistance for all kinds of yeah I mean even just coming for Zumba uh, uh, you know and, and trying to exercise trying to gain services that it's a safe access and so uh, we've we've had difficulty with it and we're trying to find a, a, a solution to the problem so the number uh, that Gary Persichetti got from the the quote was two hundred and sixty thousand for uh, our, for fixing our parking lot in the front, the sidewalk, uh, all the berms have been ch chopped up and in the back where our Meals on Wheels folks come and, and, and get the, uh, the meals, where our emergency services come. And also, um, one of the main things is we're trying to focus on how do the people from the back buildings, our, our senior housing, how do they gain access to the senior center? And there's just not a good answer. If you're 90 years old, you've got basically um, going to the back door, but that's not an accessible way. It's just a, an old set of stairs. And so people go around the parking lot like this and go um, in front of, you know, behind cars or on, on this sidewalk that's really deep cracks. 
And so we're looking to just uh, solve the problem so we don't end up with anybody else hurt. There's no blood on my shift. That's my theory. <laughs> Debbie, isn't that one of the complaints we have for the seniors in the housing in the back? They don't yeah. feel like coming over because they don't have like a safe passage. Yeah. And that's important, folks. You know, we have a very large housing complex in the back. And if we can't get them to come over and to enjoy the, you know, our senior center because they cannot walk, and that's, uh, you know. It's very isolating. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is catch people and bring them into the community, make them a vibrant and, 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 uh, and healthy part of the community because 30% of the community that's healthy is a great resource, and, but 30% of the community that's isolated, depressed, home, you know, not, not utilized um, can be very dangerous and, and, and need a lot of other services like uh, fire and police and ambulance. And we don't want that. We don't need that. That's so that's what our that's why we, we're looking to. That's surprising that the to fix these things wasn't provided when the housing no, was amazing. built. It's a, it is amazing. Yeah. Well, the housing uh, they they were having the same issues with the cracks, and they're getting those fixed this year. So um, you know, we're just looking to to make sure that our piece of it is is also safe access. So just out of curiosity, you say that you will be also conducting a feasibility study to look at increased parking. Is there a land, you're, are you just talking about restriping and maximizing what you have, or is there possibly a little pieces of property that could be developed into more parking? That's what we're looking, that's the feasibility part, is uh, looking to see if there's any way of, of stretching that. Because if you've ever been to yeah. even town meeting, <laughs> everybody's wow, parked down space. to Final Square, and you know that's not a safe passage down there and makes people come and just turn around yeah. but even on you know, veterans breakfast morning every month the whole parking lot's full and people are parked on route 40 people are parked on Sheila Ave and yeah. and uh, and there are definitely people who have come here come to the center gone Ugh, there's no good parking I turn around and go home and I that's mean, what we're trying to avoid I think it's definitely some parts of it that's a good question by the way thank you for bringing that up there are parts that could be developed for more parking without, you know, disrupting a whole lot of things on the side and also on the front. So yeah. that's a good, good question. And today we, we have our, our Thanksgiving luncheon is today. We have 150 people signed up for just the lunch. And then, uh, and then we'll have walk. We'll probably have closer to 160 people. And then we have other services going on at the same time. So parking is a premium. <laughs> Question: the, the 260k that you're asking for, would that include potentially expanded parking, or do you? Do yeah, not, do. It does not do any extended parking and does not fix the people coming from housing. We cannot fix housing's problem without land. We own nothing behind the senior center past the side, past the drive lane now to make that happen. You'd have to have a strip of land, put a proper sidewalk in, put lights up on there. It's not in this way. It's 260 does a one for one complete remodel of the existing. Just, just the existing. Existing. Condition so, down. new curbs, new sidewalks, all in one. Uh, Gary, to, yes. that, to that point, uh, can you get on the existing space, can you get more parking? Spots out of the existing space by redoing the lines or no, set up, no, no. so the parking would remain the same. Yes. I just want to add to the parking conversation <coughs> that was on the review of uh, town meeting what people thought about how town meeting was run. Parking was like the number one of the number one things that came up about you know. And those so are most people are, are well able bodied, and, able -bodied yeah. uh, and imagine being ninety and trying to get out of the house for the day. <laughs> uh, but so. it doesn't include that backspace, just the, no. the current footprint. It is goes, the current footprint. So as Deb said, around the building, we're going to exit, we'll all be done. But it'll be done in the same fashion that it is now. There's no land that we own that could, and there's not enough room to take away part of your drive lane to make that a sidewalk, not properly. Well, is there any way to discuss with the housing authority? Of course there is. Okay. We've had conversations. Yeah. All right. and what I'm just trying to answer a question that would relate to the monies you're trying to ask for on the table. I, people need to have the right understanding. 
But to get on the stand also, Gary, or God forbid, if someone falls down, we have two people that have fallen down, we have you know, information on that, and uh, you know, I can see someone falling down and getting a lawyer and so forth, and then we get a real situation on our hands. You know, if that's the fault of them falling down, you know, and so it's just another issue there, you know. When, when do you anticipate your feasibility study will be complete in terms of potential expansion of parking? That's something that was really just brought up in our last month's conversations about expanding that, so uh, we don't have a timeline on that necessarily yet. Uh, that's something we'd have to talk to the housing. We're they're on the um, they're on our age friendly uh, committee for for the town as well. So we haven't addressed that you know, expansion yet. That was just something brought up when when I met with Paul and um, and and Gary in the past month. Okay. But by doing the and, parking lot. Gary, how would that affect the table was done and you folks approve it and so forth? The other issues could come up later. It wouldn't affect what we're doing now, correct? It depends on what you're doing. If you were going to utilize some of your front, if it was even feasible, we had parking, then you'd be ripping out brand new curbing okay. to make the lot bigger. It depends on the design of what you're looking for. Um, I would think the rear part, if you're getting some land from housing and you're adding that on, I'm not sure there'd be much of a disruptance to the rear lot if it was just repaved going around. But again, I mean, it, it, what you're talking about almost just begs for a bigger plan and more research. Because when you add impervious, you have to make sure you have enough drainage for it. So yeah, it's a rear study to take the extra water flow. Anything's doable. Thank you, Karen. And, and the other thing is, uh, if we were to look for expansion of the parking lot, we did talk about other options to, to look for funding because we have um, the, the age-friendly community um, initiative. There are funds available through that type of thing. So if that might be able to pay for that part. Uh, I'm just trying to solve the problem of making sure that our place is safe. Yeah. And uh, you know, whatever it's going to take to do that is what we need first and why we wanted to really present it this year and put it on the table. Uh, I, I, and that's my concern. So expansion is a, is a whole nother idea and you know, has been brought up in, in just recently. And I think it's a good one. I think it's important to, to address for accessibility as well. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that we, we keep things safe. So wh whatever we can do to do that. Great. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Appreciate it. Next on the agenda, I'd like to invite representatives from the Department of Public Works. Uh, this morning we have with us um, Public Works Director Gary Persichetti and Assistant Public Works Director Steve Jeanling. Their projects are numbered 8 to 12 on your detail sheets. <clears throat> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Paul. As you know, um, a lot of ours are standard. Um, sidewalk construction is an ongoing every year. Road maintenance, the same. Um, both of those are very much needed. I think last year we had the conversation of the fact that we stayed around the 200, 250,000 mark for quite a few years. And what that basically did is if you were able to do just hypothetically uh, 200 feet or 700 feet for 250,000 towards the end of that amount you were probably doing closer to 300 feet because everything's going up and the money never did so um, we asked for the increase that we we have now to 325 and 350 so that um, we're at least getting the same mileage that we were out of what we're trying to do and get that done 
Sure. I just want to say uh, Tom's Drive was done last year, and I can't believe how nice it is to drive down the street, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, how, how many feet of sidewalk do you get for that? Well, we don't, actually, I just made it up, what I just told you. I don't know the exact feet because it depends on what we're doing. Like um, this year, we have quite a bit of repair on the list as, in, versus a lot of new. Oh, okay. So you're going to get a lot more footage because new can, consists of a curbing again and everything sometimes used is just a, a redoing of the asphalt itself. Um, so since Tom's Drive is so nice, I can't help but notice now that I drive down Kathy Road, like, wow, that... Not just stay straight to West <laughs> <laughs> um, But so I, it just occurred to me to ask about the, the number mix between um, sidewalk and streets. Would, would you be able to do more streets if there was a shift in the numbers, or you? Well, what it, I mean, you have to remember too. We also have uh, the state state aid funds, Chapter ninety funds, right. which supplements the majority of our road <coughs> paving projects. Okay. Yep. Um, Typical, uh, what we've been doing recently, just to expand on a little bit with the road maintenance, is we've been doing smaller areas. Um, this year we did Edson Street over on East Chelms for just a small stretch. We did a lane on Drum Hill Road by Burger King, if you notice. Uh, we did a, um, the end of Dalton Road down by the Cannon by Chelmsford Street. Mm -hmm. So we've been using this for more smaller areas that we wouldn't necessarily soak up all the Chapter 90 money bouncing around doing small little areas. Yeah. Like Thomas Drive was a Chapter 90 project because that the road is longer than you think. Um, you know, we, 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 we like, uh, what else did we do this year? We did just finished Glen Ave, McFarland Road. Um, so chapter 90 money, uh, you know, we get a little over 1.1 million from the state and we use, um, like I say, this money to supplement that. Um, you know, as I think I've probably said to the committee, I know I said it to the finance committee before, uh, Mass Municipal Association has done studies statewide and for us to maintain our road condition we should have roughly 3.2 three and a half million dollars annually you know clearly we don't get that we get a little less than half of that between chapter 90 money and then the local capital funds so you know it's we're fighting a, a losing battle as far as road condition goes so we try to make do with with what we get so that's why, like I say, instead of like paving all of Drum Hill Road, we pick a bad section. We pick that lane from Cumberland Farms up to the you know, Nissan dealer, basically yeah. Starbucks. We did that lane, you know, so then we can crack seal and do some other stuff on the road to make it, you know, serviceable for five or ten years, depending. I mean, clearly there's a lot of traffic there, so that road takes a beating. So, you know, that's that's kind of how we've been operating. Well, I just really wanted to pay attention to how great job you guys are doing. And, uh, what difference that made, and also whether you, whether you would want, you know, whether you're comfortable with the number, so you're, you got the total number for the sidewalks and the, the streets, and whether you're comfortable with the the breakdown of the two numbers. I mean, could you get significantly more streets if you took a little bit away from the sidewalks? Is basically what I was just asking. Yeah. Just yep. And then what it does is it works the sidewalks in a way that they start to get behind so it's really okay, a, no it's that. really a hard balance when you're running with numbers that aren't really enough anyway but that's pretty typical of every town it's yeah. not like Chelmsford's you know different than most so yeah. so Gary you just mentioned that the the funds for the sidewalk you have maintenance repair as well as new sidewalk yes mm -hmm. so the question is when are we done with the sidewalk project from a build-out perspective and transition just to pure maintenance? I'm, I'm losing you a yeah. little. There, there you're, was, you're saying we're done sidewalks and should, I, and no, we have a lot more to go. We, we, as you know, we have a pavement and sidewalk management plan is what we work off of. Um, and that's the study that we did that t tells you the worst roads. And as Steve said, you know, 3.2 is the right number. We're running about half of that. So the projects run at a slower pace than we would like if we were funded by Chapter 90 for the whole amount. But um, like, you know, the sidewalks were just done at the end of um, Richardson Road um, to Princeton. 
this year. Um, we, uh, uh, we did a stretch here on 129 of replacement last year that needed it. So that was an old, you know, a dig up in an overlay of that. So we're trying to match that stuff and we're trying to keep them both going because there's nothing worse than um, having people say, gee, you got all this nice sidewalk, but if you come into my neighborhood, you know, you got ruts bigger than, you know, and, and cheer, wheelchairs can't get down it. So um, we have to drive and look at both of these things and try to keep some kind of uh, management of both. But the, there is a plan that says we're going to have X number of miles of sidewalk in yeah. town. Yes. Oh, yes. So the, the, so the question is, where are we at that plan? Are we going to 50% complete? Are we 95% complete? Oh, no, you're probably closer to, for the new stuff, you're probably closer to 50 40 to 50. I mean, I, I could battle streets off the top of my head that are on it that, you know, we're well, probably 10 years out for even being considered for sidewalk construction. Um, you know, we've, we've the last few years again, in Motor Roads, we've kind of done this, this balance of, you know, new construction in spots that were, you know, planned for either connecting to make a loop, you know, or connecting a neighborhood like we yeah, spoke of the Richardson Road sidewalk. Um, and then also uh, maintenance of existing sidewalk, like a year and a half ago or two years ago, or whatever, we did the stretch up North Road, just, you know, peel hot top, reset a uh, little bit of curbing, because that was, you know, not really walkable. That sidewalk was all over the place. So it's a, it's a balance of maintaining what we have and then trying to also add, you know, expand on the plan to, you know, have sidewalk connectivity through the neighborhood. The Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee has a master plan that indicates stuff we work with that, we have our own plan, we try to time things around when we're doing road construction, so you know, we're not coming in, digging up the road twice type of deal. Um, so again, it's a, it's a fine balance of, you know, maintaining what we have and also trying to expand on um, the sidewalk program in town. Okay, so the expansion basically is something which is going to go on for 10 years. Oh, oh easily. You can oh, well, longer than that. Add yes. You can always yeah. build sidewalks. Like Davis Road is one that if this money comes in, we'll have some rework done on it. It's one of the older roads as far as sidewalks goes and needs to be repaired. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess the next would be the uh, replacement of heavy duty 10 wheel truck. Yeah, number 10 is your 10 wheel we uh, have on the list. Uh, yeah. Okay. As you can see, it's a 1999 International. Um, truck's been great, just it's at the point where... Um, it's off the it, road currently. Yeah, it's off the road due to uh, some frame rod inspection. And this was bumped last year, I believe. Right. Yes, this is yes it was. One ton pickup, which is basically mostly a drainage style truck that we use. Um, has sort of a flat bed with sides, so you can do a lot of uh, moving of different kind of materials on and off to job sites, including equipment. Also in poor condition, 120,000 miles on it, and uh, of course those are including plowing miles because pretty much every vehicle we have doubles as a plow, plow truck. And that, that's also a 1999 Ford. Right. And then the next would be G, the GIS, correct? GIS, yeah. Let's see if we can... Number 12. <coughs> Um, okay. Uh, yeah, the GIS update, uh, if everyone's familiar on the, or well, have seen it on the town website, there's a link to the GIS mapping and stuff that has all the assessor's data 
has uh, what they call planimetrics, and then it shows everybody's like driveway, house, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, the current data that we have is from uh, late 2003, early 2004, was when the GIS system was kind of implemented here in town. Typically, these things are done every 10 years. I've had this kind of silently running on the capital plan here, the five-year plan for a few years, because just solely because the number's pretty big. Because uh, it's, you know, it's a town-wide, it's new flyover, it's all new data. You know, it's used by just about every department in town. Uh, you know, planning, us at DPW, um, assessors uses it, you know, we use it in the field. Uh, and so this is a, a full town-wide update of um, everything. They, they fly over, it comes in as 40-scale data, we get CAD data, all new, you know, all that data, as you see on the town website, would all be updated. I mean, you might think that, you know, town's built out, not, not a lot changes, but there's quite a bit that goes on. Uh, so it would update, you know, all roads, all parking lots, all sidewalk, you know, all that data comes in on that. Anything you see currently would come in, and, and obviously, you know, you're talking 15 years technology-wise, you know, it's leaps and bounds ahead of what it was 15 years ago when it, when it was done. So, I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. <laughs> It's a purchase of data, right? Yeah, what we do is you contract out with a company, they come um, do the flyover data, uh, then they they take that data and turn it into what basically what you see on online. Okay. You know, and then we'll get like the hardcore data, you know, down in my office. Um, but then it'll look totally different because, mm -hmm. like I say, because the technology is so much better now than it was 15 years ago. Great. Any other questions for Gary or Steve? Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Why does that live in engineering? Why wouldn't it be a well, it's just, disbursement? It's just we have to categorize it by some type of um, division in the DPW, and that's basically who submitted it. Next on the agenda, we have um, our fire department. Good morning. We have Chief Gary Ryan and Deputy Chief Mike Donahue. Good morning, Good morning gentlemen. The fire department projects are numbered six and seven on your detail sheets. Good morning, members of the board. Good morning. Good morning. So after reviewing our equipment and our operational needs, we respectfully ask for your consideration for the following. Uh, fiscal 2020, uh, this project proposes to purchase a new engine for, for 718960 uh, you may recall this was a project that we requested last year, so it was deferred to this year. Currently, 2000, our 2007 Engine 4 has 70, over 75,000 miles and 6,557 engine miles, engine hours. So if you calculate the engine hours to odometer reading, that comes out to 121,000 miles per odometer. So it's, it's up there. Uh, this purchase, if we're granted, would provide us with two reliable reserve engines. A 1998, which is our current reserve engine, and the 2007 truck. This truck would be placed as reserve. Historically, we've had two reserve engines. When I became chief in 2015, we reviewed our fleet, and the truck, we had a 1985 Mac that was 30 years old, wouldn't have passed any safety test without a significant investment. So we retired that truck. In the plan I've stated before the board is we try to replace these trucks, the frontline trucks, on a 15-year schedule, and we will use the backup trucks, the reserve trucks. We will try to keep them for 25 years. The issue we're running into now is our reserve truck, the 1998, is 20 years old, and it's in, even though it's a reserve truck, it's in service all the time. For routine maintenance or repairs, that truck is always in daily use. Recently, we had a truck that was out for three weeks. So that truck was in frontline service. So even though it's reserve, it's used all the time. And again, we're trying to keep up with that schedule, the 15 years for the frontline piece and 25 years for the reserve truck. So we want to extend that life. So it's important that we're at that critical juncture where we're looking at all our apparatus fleets, we're hitting that 15 year mark. And I know we're not gonna go over all five years, but if you look at the five year plan that I presented, for the five years, we're looking at replacing engines. So. 
Um, any questions on that before I move on to the next project? Okay. Now, what we had scheduled for this year, for 2020, was funding for a new mechanics truck. It's known as Service 2. Service 2 is a Ford 350 with over 68,000 miles on it. And our plan would be to take that truck and get the mechanic a new truck and make that our new plow truck. The current plow truck that we have, Service 3, is a 2002 Ford truck. And this truck is used, it's got 38,000 miles on it. It's used to plow all five stations. It will respond to emergency calls in the winter if there's a patient that we have to get equipment to, like the stretcher in the middle of winter, when this happens quite a bit with the snowstorms we've had, we have to plow a path to get the medical supplies and equipment. It's also used as a backup spare rescue if we need it. Um, this truck, this 2002, is experiencing significant mechanical and body rot issues. Our intention was initially to use it as a backup plow, um, but we may be retiring this truck very soon. So it's critical for the fire department that we have a plow truck. So um, did this current truck underperform in terms of life expectancy? No, the Service 3 has not. That's the 2002. Uh, I think the fact that we've had it as long as we did kind of speaks to the, I think the investment that we, we put in. Trust down the right. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, but the mechanics truck that we're proposing, and if you're wondering the price of the 70000 it's going to include a lift gate. If you notice that the, the animal control officer has a hydraulic lift gate, that is a recommendation made by the town's insur uh, insurance loss prevention for, for safety reasons, you know, for the lifting of generators, hose, tires. Instead of physically lifting up and injuring your back, your knees, they're looking to add these hydraulic lifts, so that adds to the price of the truck. So the 2002, which would be 16 years old or something, that's being moved out. It only has only has 38,000. It's only got 38,000. But when we use it, we use it in the worst possible environment, the snow. So it's experiencing body rot. Okay. So it's even though it's 16 years old, 16 years old. it only has like 40,000. 40, I would say 40,000. It's, it's been used. Uh, in a rough manner, it's what you use yes. for tough jobs. It plows. We maintain our, our five stations, so we plow the five stations. Okay. And in addition to plowing the five stations, if we need it, and if we have a major snowstorm, it's not. It's, it, it happens that we will be called to go to a house for a medical to yeah. create a path. Oh. So it, it's it's used for more than just plowing the stations. Um. I'm sorry. And no that'll be totally, oh, you were moving up to be something else. Right, exactly. When we, when I submitted this, and I can understand it confused, when I submitted this, we were looking to use past that 2002 to our fire investigation unit. Okay. And then take that truck, which is a 2005 repurposed police car, police vehicle, we were going to get rid of that. Okay. But recently, we've encountered more mechanical issues with it, so we're possibly... I mean, if we get this funding, we might be moving on from that based on the body we're on, based on the investment we're going to have to make in this truck. But it's critical that we have a plow truck. Yeah. I, I was just confused by the mileage, I guess. No, that's fine. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions for Gary? Thank you, gentlemen. No. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Next on the agenda, we have the Chumster Public Library. And with us this morning is our director, Becky Herman, and also Mike Harridan, operations manager. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Their it's projects are number five on your detail sheets. John, Dennis, Dennis John. John. Okay. <laughs> um, our request is a continuation of what we had requested last year, where we did, we had um, originally requested 150,000 for our carpet replacement, and then it was recommended by the capital planning to phase it. So we are in the midst of our our 
um, first stage of that this year. We, um, I can give you sort of a little update on, on where we're at with that. Um, we didn't go, um, we didn't start the process during the summer because, of course, we're super busy with summer reading, and, and um, so we just have started that process this fall. We, Mike very helpfully set us up with five different carpeting <laughs> manufacturers. We spent two days where we were just immersed in looking at a million different kinds of, of carpet tile, which is the way that we're going rather than broad loom. And, um, and learned everything about recycled materials and off-gassing and you know the, the thread content and all of those things. Um, and we are um, we did actually come to the conclusion we're going to we're looking at a company called Interface for our actual sure. product. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Could, if, if we have a conversation, I could just ask her to be discussed in the hallway because some people having trouble hearing. Oh, um, so we're looking at a product called Interface, which is the manufacturer, and they're part of the MA, um, MHEC contract. And um, where actually my next stage is that when uh, we have the trustees meeting next week, then I'll have a, about five different choices for them on color and, and um, pattern. And, um, and then we'll be able to move ahead. And, and then we're looking at um, installation. They'll, you know, we'll be, have the three different estimates for installers um, so that... Um, the big thing with us is that making sure that we're doing um, something where we can keep the library open as much as possible. And so by phasing it this way, it actually means that we can, we can do the main floor in the old part of Adams and be able to use the side door and have access downstairs and the children's room would be able to be open. And then the, in the following years, we can flip that. And then the last year would be administrative offices, which would mostly just inconvenience, inconvenience staff during that part. But, but yeah, so... The, we're just trying to keep it going, and so the request for this this uh, next fiscal year would be another fifty thousand for the second stage of it. Questions? Questions. Fairly straightforward. <laughs> and also, we did distribute. Um, this is the only project for the library for fiscal year twenty. I did distribute the material that you provided me on the computer replacements for coming right. years. Yeah, so the just that's just that. a heads up because yes. that's a four to six yeah. Yeah. year rotation. Exactly. So. That was excellent. So you're you're still in the selection yes. phase for the funding that was approved. Yes. Um, would you combine the installation if this if this funding is? Approved. You mean like try to do it so that like in June and July and then yeah. be able to yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah we would definitely look at that yeah okay yeah no I mean whatever we can do to maximize the or minimize the disruption to the public um, would be you know the, the ultimate goal for sure and then the next fiscal year you'd have the the final phase whatever whatever residual carpeting right. need to be replaced okay. Thank you. Thank All you right. both of you. Thank you. What I'd like to do next is we have, um, just to explain, I know we have a number of handouts this morning. So the first one uh, is one that usually we usually discuss because it helps put the funding into context. Is it's the long spreadsheet that's it's actually a 10-year debt service projection. We, and we usually look at our non-excluded debt because that's what we use to fund capital. So when you look at the bottom, if you look at, try to um, look past all of the numbers, if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that for fiscal year 20, um, our non-excluded debt service is projected to decrease only about 18,000 from the current level. It's currently, this year, it's 7.55 million. It's expected to decrease to about 7.53 million. So the only, the, this is one of the challenges we have this year is that's not a significant amount. So when you look at the story does get better when you look at fiscal year 21, it's expected to decrease 382,000. The following year after that, fiscal year 22, it drops another 243,000 and so on. So uh, looking, you know, to put this in context, um, one of the challenges that our committee has this year is we have about, we received about 24 projects, totaling about 4.9 million. Um, you know, we can have discussion on this it, it, at this point, uh, my recommendation would be that we that we consider these things in the context that we're probably only really going to be able to fund realistically, similar to last year, about 3.2, maybe as much as 3.3 million. But I don't see us being able to able to um, do much more than that without ratcheting up the debt schedule more than what we have. The um, 
The other handout that you have in front of you is um, provided by Darlene, who's here, our town accountant, and it's a recapture uh, balance summary. And, uh, it's down from what you've usually seen in, in past years. We have a couple of different sources. Darlene's listed all of the projects that have been completed that were funded in prior years, and you see that the total recapture funds uh, is pretty low this year. It's just over 12,000. We also have um, bond premiums that we received uh, totaling uh, over just over 58,000. So we have about roughly 70,000. That's this sheet with the two gray stripes on it. Uh, we have about $70,352 that we can use as another funding source to, to kind of defray the amount that we borrowed. So uh, just so the committee has that information. So is that added to the $3.3 million nominally? Usually we try to target three, three, like last year I looked, we, it was roughly $3.2 million, but we had about, we had over 200000 of bond premiums or yeah. other funds. So I would say as um you know, the 70,000 would be deducted from the 3.2, 3.3 million, whatever's approved. So it'll be a, we'll be somewhere just over the 3 million level. Okay. We have a little bit of flexibility, but it's kind of not real positive news on the respect that it's, it's down from where it's been. And um, part of the reason for that too is, um, just, just for folks is, we're, when we receive bond premiums in, with the Mass Municipal Modernization Act, we've been able to do it a different way. And what, it, so if we receive two or three hundred thousand in premiums, what we've been able to do now is it allows us to decrease the power amount of the new bonds that we issue. So it's great for the town financially in that if we borrow three, if we issue bonds for three point three million, and we receive premiums of three hundred thousand, they allow us to issue the bonds at the lower amount. Where before the Modernization Act, we couldn't do that. So we always had these premiums that we had to reserve and then asked town meeting to appropriate them later to defray the capital plan. So I just wanted to explain to everyone that's part of the reason that we don't have as much extra funding, if you will, as we once had. So. And next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, these were emailed out to everyone. Did everyone have a chance to read through the minutes? I know this has been a while. Um, because we meet seasonally, uh, it, it can be a challenge. These are from the, our last meeting of the last season was from December 1st, 2017. If everyone had a um, chance to review these, I'd entertain a motion to accept if anyone has any corrections. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, meeting minutes of December. 2017 as presented. Do we have a second? Okay. Second by Maggie. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from December 1st, 2017, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstain. One abstention. And the motion to accept uh, is approved. Thank you. Do we have any discussion or questions from Members of the committee that you want to bring the, forward, or the police department's <coughs> coming another day. Yeah, actually, just to explain that we had I had amended the agenda. They were going to uh, present, but their project they they actually made a decision. They 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 do not have any projects for funding this year. So I provided their long term okay. plan to you, but I Chief Spinney and told me he does not have any projects slated for fiscal year twenty. So okay, that's just a change on the agenda. I wanted to go over the schedule ahead just so we, the committee knows. Yeah. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So, our next meeting date is November 16th, next week. At that time, we should have a pretty full agenda. We're going to hear from uh, both um, municipal and school technology and then municipal and school facilities. So, that will be a busy meeting. And I believe the cemetery superintendent is also attending that. And then finally, our last meeting we're going to take will be off as we usually do for the week of Thanksgiving, uh, just because it's difficult to meet the day after Thanksgiving for everyone, in case people are traveling. The next meeting is Friday, November 30th. And on the schedule for that, we have um, our town clerk coming in. And that will also leave us time to deliberate and discuss the projects and try to come up with a plan. And if there's any um, if there's any, should we have a snowstorm or there's unforeseen events, 
we can then meet the first Friday of December, if needed. So potentially we're voting on 11:30. Mm -hmm. At this point, yes, exactly. That's that's a good way to put it. I just feel that this format that you've been adopting for the past few years works really, really well, where the people come here and present. It, that's, it was different when I was on the board a while ago, but this just seems like a very efficient way to do things. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, we've, I remember years back, probably this is over 10 or 12 years, we used to have liaisons that would actually go out to departments, yes. but then you would have to come back. And uh, So if you were assigned yep. to public yep. works, you would go out and visit with public works, but then you'd have yep. to come back and share the information with the whole committee. Things so. get lost in yeah. translation, yeah. so this yeah. works much better. <laughs> I, I concur with that. I mean, I think yeah. having the whole committee being able to hear from the department heads is really a good thing. Mm -hmm. so, no, thank you. I do think in this kind of, uh, there's so many things that need to be done and so little money. So it's not that you wouldn't want to give everybody all the things that they need. It's just priorities big choices. that's a challenge we have and I've, I know I've discussed this with the town manager we we have so many requests we, we definitely we've been around this three million number for a number of years now and looking past fiscal year 20 I think you can definitely make a strong case that we need to increase that yeah. number but I just don't looks at FY 20 will be difficult to do it but looking down the road on part of our long-term plan that's where we're going I hope you can do that Okay, any other questions or comments? If, if not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All those in favor of adjourning? Okay. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous. Thank you. So our next meeting will be adjourned. We'll, our next meeting is next week, Friday, November 16th. Thank you, everyone.